coming from your faith. <clears throat> I'm glad and rejoice all, with all of you about I am being put out like a drink offering. It also appears in Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. For I am already being put out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. Very obvious. It means his death was coming. As the founder of Philippine Church, Paul wanted the church to know this. However, compared with 2 Timothy, Philippines 2.17 has an extra meaning. He's talking about all things sacrifice and worship. Let's take a look of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 3 to 5. Numbers, chapter 15, verse 3 to 5. And you present to the Lord fruit offering from the herd and herd and the flock as an aroma pleasing to the Lord, whether burnt offerings or sacrifice, for special vows or weaving offerings or festival offerings. Then the person who brings an offering should present to the Lord a grain offering of a tank of an effort of the finest flour mixed with a quarter of a hing of olive oil. With, with each lamb for the burnt offering or the sacrifice, prepare a quarter of a hing of oil as a drink offering. This passage and Philippines 2.17 also have some very similar words about worship, such as drink offering and sacrifice. When Paul wrote Philippines 2.17, he referred to the worship system in the Old Testament. In the time of the Old Testament, the people should prepare a quarter of a hing of wine as a drink offering. How much is a quarter of a hing? It is a bit more than four liters. Take a soft drink to be the reference. It lit more than three large bottles. Therefore, the people should love well the wine at once but little by little, until it was empty. This was the worship of Paul. He offered his work, the faith of Philippine Church, also put out his life to be the sacrifice to worship God. So, worship is not just singing or praying. It is the life of worshiper. Is there any other passage in Bible support this concept? In the Old Testament, the Lord did not accept the offering of Cain. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 7, the Lord replied, Cain, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door, it decides to have you. But you must rule over it. The Lord did not accept case offering because he did not do what was right. In the New Testament, woman chapter 12, verse 1 points it out very strictly. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Proper can be translated into reasonable. The law is more concerned with what we do than what we offer. For true worshippers, besides worshipping in church, they also glorify God in daily life. And this kind of worship is reasonable. Today, how do we worship? We think Jesus is our Lord on Sunday. Is Jesus also a lot from Monday to Saturday? If there is a great difference between what we do and what we sing, will God accept our worship? May God so mercy on us, help us worship and glorify Him with our lives. What are the effects if we worship God with our lives? The scripture mentions two effects. Let's look into the first one, also the second key point, the effect of worship 
with life, part one. Life affects life. Life affects life. Paul put out his life until empty, but he was not the first one to do this. Chapter two, verse five to eleven. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in fact related to God, do not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking up the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That's at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. In fact, Paul followed the example of Jesus to worship with his whole life. Jesus pulled out himself to glorify God first. He is the Son of God, but was willing to become a man, died on the cross, and rose again, so that people can be saved by believing believing in Him. Just like verse eleven looks, and every time acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to glory to the glory of God the Father. Jesus is the best example and the foundation of glorifying God with life. Paul followed the example of Jesus and poured out his life to worship God. Then he affected Timothy. Chapter two, verse nineteen to twenty-two. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I also may be cheered with I receive news about you. I have no one else like him, who will show generous concern. Uh, For your welfare, for everyone looks out for their own interests, not those Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself, because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. At that moment, everyone looked out their own interests, but Timothy was different. It means Timothy had the same mindset with Paul, and they served together for the gospel. Their relationship just like father and son. Paul worshipped God with life, and it affected Timothy. Not only Timothy, but also Epaphroditus. Chapter two, verse twenty-five to thirty. But I think it is necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus, my brother, co-worker. And fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs, for he longs for all of you, and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill, and almost died. But God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but also on me, to spare my sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I'm all the more eager to send him, so that when you see him again, you may be glad, and I may have less anxiety. <clears throat> so then, welcome him in the Lord with great joy, and honor people like him, because he almost died for the work of Christ. He risked his life to make up for the help you yourselves could not give me. Epaphroditus was sent by Philippine Church. He worked with Paul and took care of Paul's need. However, he was sick seriously. Paul describes he almost died for the work of Christ. They were in distress together, and Paul called him as my brother, co-worker, and fellow soldier. He was same as Paul. And willing to pour out himself to worship God. We have talked about the relationship between Paul and Timothy, just like father and son. Let me also talk about my father. He came to Hong Kong from mainland China when he was very young. 
it had a lot of license, such as electrical worker from uh, the causing and a few types of driving licenses. If there was any problem of water or electricity at home, he would fix it. However, he passed away when I was eight. After that, one day, there was some problem about uh, the water at the pipe, and my mother didn't know what she should do. At that moment, one of my sisters switched the uh, pipe and then it was fixed. My mother asked her why she knew that. She said, I have seen father did this. The people around us watch what we have done, especially the children. Life a fast life. What do we want them to learn from us? Knowledge, abilities, or heart of fearing God and life of worship? If we worship with our true heart, the ones who have the close relationship with us will also serve and glorify God together. There is another effect of worship with life. This is the third key point. The effect of worship with life. Part two, rejoice. Rejoice. Verse 17 and 18 also mentions glad and rejoice. Paul proved out himself, but he rejoiced. Why? Firstly, Paul worshipped with, uh, with his life, and the Lord accepted his worship. He was angry when the Lord did not accept his offering. So it is reasonable that Paul rejoiced when the Lord accepted his worship. Moreover, verse 17 mentions service coming from your faith. In fact, Paul's worship did not just affect Timothy and Epaphroditus only, but also affect Philippine church. Chapter 4, verse 18 describes the gifts from the church was an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. A father will be happy if his son has some certain achievement. Being the founder of the church, when the worship of the church was accepted by the Lord, it means the church had gone. Paul rejoiced, and the church should rejoice with him. And chapter 4, verse 1 looks very straightly. The church was his joy and crown. He rejoiced because of the, the effect of his work and his worship. We may have a question. I have to face so many difficulties, maybe it's financial struggle, family issues, or health problems. How can I pull out myself to glorify God? Let's take a look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 18. Paul said, I have received full payment and have more than enough. Where was he? He was in prison with low freedom, and he had to receive the supply from the other. But he said, I have more than enough. Why? First 19 to 20, chapter 4, first 19 to 20. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Some people may think that at the end of the letter, it was very common that Paul wrote down a few words to praise the Lord. God praised the Lord indeed. But Paul did not just do this very generally. Paul believed that he would be sufficient in Jesus Christ in any time and anywhere. And for him, the most important was that our God and Father be glory. Since the most important have been fulfilled, the other things were more than enough. How could Paul not rejoice? I will not say that all of us should serve the Lord in full time because he has set different plans for every one of us individually. Perhaps the Lord called us to glorify him in our families or workplaces. So, when we are in family, in work, 
or in other situations, do we do everything according to the teachings of Bible, so that the other may see we glorify God with joy? Paul put out himself and worshipped God with his love. He tried his best to spread the gospel and edify the church, and his life accepted the other brother, uh, and his life affected the other brothers and sisters. His worship had been accepted by the Lord, and he could see the effects of his work. Therefore, he rejoiced. He was joyful indeed. Dear brothers and sisters, do we want to rejoice? Do we want to have a joyful life? If yes, after the Sunday service, what will we do? How will we live? If we have not experienced this kind of joy, there may be a lot of reasons. However, we should ask a question: Do I worship God with my life? Rather than glorifying God, do we pursue other things more passionately, even to glorify ourselves? When we have to make some decisions, do we believe that Jesus is our God, our Lord? Do we worship with life truly? Do we focus on to our God and Father be glory? Whether our worship is accepted by the Lord or not, not only based on what we do in the service. The P condition is whether we have the life of worship, offer our whole lives to glorify our God, our Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, please help us to bear in mind that you are the only God, so that we will worship you and glorify you with every moment of our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.